a massive welcome to this week's Insight interview. We still haven't got a name for it yet, so any thoughts you've got on that would be really appreciated. But as we talked about in the last one, the key thing in these ones is about 10 minutes of insights from interesting people doing interesting things with interesting stories to tell. I don't have anything interesting to say on my, it's my side. This is why I get to meet these amazing people and find out their own journeys. The person I meet today is someone I've known for a massively long time. I'm trying to think when it was. I think the first time Nathaniel and I met was when he won the Enterprising Young Brits Award uh, with the then Prime Minister Gordon Brown. That's right. I think it, was. it sort of gives you a bit of an indication of, of the time it was for an amazing initiative he was doing at the time called the Safety Box. But without further ado, I'm going to hand over to him quickly to say who you are and what you do. So Nathaniel, what is it you're up to? Uh, yeah, my name is Nathaniel Pete, um, the co-founder of GenX, which is a renewable energy company. Uh, basically teaches women and young people how to build solar and install and maintain. And we sell them commercially, but it actually has a social foundation. Uh, the other enterprise, which I co- uh, founded many years ago, in fact, is called the Safety Box, which is an initiative born out of the great need to proactively uh, c- you know, address the growing concerns of antisocial behaviour, violence, low self-esteem in young people in the UK. So let's, we'll start on the GenX side, then we'll come on to the safety box side. So GenX, the really interesting thing with that is the fact about that training. That's right. It isn't like you just come in and you give out, it's you skill up, that's right. train up to yeah. provide for themselves a local workforce. Absolutely. I mean, you know, that, that's it. You know, when you're talking about areas like Africa yeah. and countries in Africa, where you've got a village that is, say, 30 kilometres away from a town. Um, there's issues with, uh, you know, people with the technical skills, if they get a solar product, how are they going to fix it if it breaks down? And so by training the local workforce, what it does is it actually develops that ecosystem. Yeah. It develops the, uh, the, the education, the jobs, um, and, and impacts also the, 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 the climate, you know, because um, the fossil fuels and kerosene are, are dangerous. You know, you, you get babies which die from it. So it's a, it's a critical component, in fact, um, in, in spreading uh, renewable energy in, in rural areas in, in, in many countries around Africa, and in fact, uh, also in the Caribbean and, and Southern America. And especially where, you know, in relation to traditional energy, power, infrastructure issues, lack of control over when power is on and off, and when obviously the sun goes down, work finishes, all the issues associated with that, like providing their own power source, not only on the solar side, the renewable side and stuff like that, but that skilling up local workforce is absolutely... What brought you into that? Because that wasn't your area before, was it? No, no, it it wasn't. It wasn't really my area before. I mean, I qualified as an engineer, so at, at university I did engineering, so that's sort of where the you know, kind of renewable yeah. <laughs> kind of thing came from, but um, and the manufacturer around it. Yeah. But um, you know, what it was is um, I was actually looking for a disruptive method of um, getting a phone case <laughs> into the Olympics. <laughs> yes, and um, I remember my business partner at the time. Um, we were connected through this uh, this platform known as Room, uh, well, Virgin Media Pioneers. Yeah, um, it's, n- it's not around anymore. It, it, it kind of went into Voom and, Give and little, uh, um, uh, handheld cameras to people. And stuff that's right. Yeah. So we, we were get, we were given like a little laptop we're given a handheld camera and and we said you know what let's try and network this into the olympics uh, and we we managed to get uh, a same bolt to <laughs> pose with a picture with this jamaica branded phone case and we networked our way into jamaica house which was in the greenwich arena That's and uh, it was so cool because we did a video and uh, posted it to virgin and um, richard branson picked it up and he actually, awesome. put, he actually put us in his book um, yeah. the schools that they teach at business school and after we did that we said you know what well the the branded phone case is a it's kind of dead. <laughs> so we said, let's create something else. So we, we thought about charging cases. Um, at the time, there was another company that was doing charging cases. And we said, okay, well, let's think about something different. Let's think about solar powered charging. Yeah. And so we got our first innovation done. And I was actually invited to a friend's uh, leaving do. They were going to, to, to Canada. And I was sitting opposite someone from Kenya. And she saw this prototype on the table charging my phone. And she said, What's that? <laughs> so I said, that's just one of our products. And she said, look, can I take it to Kenya? <laughs> so I was like, fantastic, yeah, sure. So she took it to Kenya, cut a long story short, um, people kept asking for bigger things. So they started to ask for a lantern, yeah. a home lighting system. So the thing is, where the, where the need was, we simply innovated to create the products. And now we're actually looking at um, mini grids and, and uh, you know, that's how, how big it's actually come from. Uh, a solar charger, which would power a phone up to now full, full-edged solar panels that are going to power up to 100 kilowatt, kilowatts worth of, of energy for, for, for communities, for schools, um, universities and, and people and villages. Right, that is awesome. And how, like, I guess a lot is around the collaboration theme, like working with others who have skill sets in different areas and knowledge base in different areas to make 
what you absolutely. do in reality. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. You know, and, and finding people better than yourself at doing yeah. a particular role is is essential to actually integrate in, into um, a, a business that's going to work yeah. uh, with the same vision. You know, because a company is really company. Like we're friends. Yeah. We make a good company, right? <laughs> you know, you're married, you make a good company. Yeah. And the thing is, when you actually get individuals that are aligned with the same purpose and vision, plus the skill sets, yeah. that's when you're going to get it, you get the acceleration. And, um, you know, so by finding local people on the ground in those areas, partnering with them, you're able then to move quicker, you're able to scale faster. And also with Gen X, it's slightly different from my other company in that I got a co-founder um, and she was a female, which brought a completely different edge um, in terms of gender equality. We're hot on gender equality. So half of the workforce are women. Part of the training, make sure that we train women because yeah. you don't oftentimes find um, the, the, within the same topic, um, manufacturing, engineering and innovation around gender equality. It's normally the pay gap or, or sexual equality and so forth. But, but uh, you know, where you're talking about now, industrial, industrialization, um, development, we're partnering that into technology. So we're seeing more women uh, in engineering. And, and, you know, so by having that partnership, both with the male and gender, uh, uh, the male, sorry, the male and female gender at the top, um, that filters all the way down. And um, having that edge and having that collaboration is really important. Fantastic. And I mean, the, the gender equality thing is an interesting one, especially in some of the countries in Africa and other parts of the world in more developing nations. It is a real challenge. Yes. And, and there's some fantastic projects like in the Slum and Derby, which I've seen around where you empower women within the family group in the yes. wider value it has to that family. Yes. But then also society, Mohammed Dunis, so I think we both yes. saw a speaker at G20. So That's right. And Nice yes. was a big believer in that micro lending to women within the family circle. So the, the wider scale of impact, it isn't just like you are providing a skill to someone. That's right. You're providing a route. You're Absolutely. You're providing a means. And Absolutely. You're inspiring a next totally. generation behind it as Absolutely. well. Totally. Absolutely, you know. And, um, you know, those transferable skills leverage into other areas. Like, so, you know, once you can assemble a circuit, you're able to then fix something. Yeah. And that's another form of income. Um, and so, yeah, the scalability and the ability. and the, 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 When you see the potential actually awakening in someone that's, that's just good at using their hands, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a great believer in learning through doing. Yeah. Um, you don't necessarily need a degree um, to actually do it. You just need to learn how to do that thing very well. Uh, it's a fantastic um, way of actually spreading a message and uh, inspiring, uh, you know, young people into into doing that. You know, part of our mandate is actually do a, to do a STEM uh, initiative as well. We've trained a number of youth uh, that are in school on yeah. how to assemble as well. So it has the ability to go through ages. Um, you know, we've got uh, old people, uh, you know, in their in their seventies um, that we've empowered in in some really r rural uh, areas of uh, of Kenya, yeah. um, and um, we're going to be working on a national program in Jamaica where we're developing a curriculum, uh, level one and level two, with the equivalent of their city guilds um, for young people to actually get work and jobs. These are youth that don't have education, um, or not in any form of education or employment. Right, that is awesome. And now to sort of Park Gen X. For a second before we come into sort of final top tips going back to safety box which yes. is where we first met the, yes the enterprising young brits and the work we're doing there obviously then it was a big challenge and i know there's the this story about why it was set up yes but now as yeah. well it's an issue in relation to society absolutely and you know, people moving away in a bit more sort of confrontation within society. Absolutely, at the absolutely. It's a, it's a problem. Absolutely, it is. Um, you know, the issues of knife crime, violence, youth violence is, a, it, it, you know, it's an epidemic. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, we're great believers that uh, the public health model should have been in play a lot a lot sooner, basically. Uh, you know, London in particular is now looking at the public health yeah. model. Um, but, but, you know, um, how that's morphed is um, before we were trying to tackle it through schools. Um, we were trying to go to the schools and actually go to the pupil referral but units. Yeah, it's a toolkit that you took into schools. That's yeah. right. Yes, yeah. But, um, it, it, you know, what we realise is that we go to a community, the problems will still be there. Yeah. Go to another community, problems will still be there. So we try to change the strategy to going into prison. Right. And um, so we've run successfully um, some really innovative um, uh, prison violence reduction programs. The first one we did in Cook and Wood Prison, we reduced the group violence by 95% in a year. That's never been achieved in a British it's prison. It's 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 yeah, um, uh, you know, fast forward to um, the latest project, which is known as the Aspire Hire program. And that is a violence reduction program. Again, it's working in partnership with other yeah. people that have evidence data of violence reduction, both in terms of trauma therapy, 
happy in terms of developing skill sets, in terms of uh, leading them into uh, you know entrepreneurial types of activity, personal development, life skill, uh, you know life skill coaching, and marrying all of those together with the conflict resolution, uh, we've actually had really very good measured reductions in violence, but also um, reductions in bullying. Uh, increase in employment in prison, increase in education from people that previously wouldn't go to education. Um, so it's having a, a wide impact. And, and through that one person that's in prison, they've got such a huge impact in the yeah. community. So if you get a, one of the elders, an elder uh, for those viewers that don't know what that is, that's a leader of a gang. An elder can actually say, yo, dead the beef. <laughs> and they would send that message out to the community or don't release the strap. The strap is a gun. Right. Don't release that or stop that. And so there's a greater ability to impact the work in the community by working in the prison. Yeah. Um, that work has actually been picked up internationally and uh, the data that we pulled from uh, Cook and Wood Prison was evaluated by the University of uh, Illinois. And uh, it was a cure violence model that was actually used in um, in that an adapted model for a British yeah. market clientele. Um, we're now actually doing work in Jamaica and helping them with their violence reduction. Um, and uh, the rules and the laws are slightly different there. So um, the self-defense aspect that we had in our program of teaching young people how to defend against knives so they don't feel the need to pick it up, wasn't as popular in the UK. However, in, in Jamaica, <laughs> they, they, they really are gravitating into it right. because um, the young people need to learn how to protect themselves. And yeah. so they would oftentimes pick up a weapon or pick up a gun to protect themselves, yeah. um, even though they're not necessarily involved in it. Yeah. And um, by teaching um, defense tactics, non-aggressive defense tactics, and upskilling their ability to avoid conflict, and, you, know, you don't want them to ever to end up yeah. in that situation, but it really is a, a, a pivotal, um, you know, a skill set I believe that we need to have in such a hostile environment. And I think like, we will get, I'll get your talk, a couple of top tips in a second. So if you just have a think about that, but some of the takeaways from me, and it's something I've been struck with in some of the other times we've talked about things or been at events on panels together, it's been around um, the, 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 the scale of influence. Yes. So finding the right people. Yes. Within the community that can articulate the message. Absolutely. And the other thing is about don't work in isolation. Absolutely. There is that thing of holding everything in, and this is my thing. That's right. And that's what I'm going to do. But to actually be willing and quite open to go out there and work with others, because that's where you can rather than you a you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Absolutely. You're doing something great. Absolutely. You can help accelerate. Brilliant. But it also means that you're not trading on people's toes. Totally. It's confusing within the ecosystem. Totally. I think that's, in, that's important. But what are your, so if there was someone out there that's looking to follow an idea or create an idea or grow a business or not only just a business, but like a safety box is, you know, a, a something that is really providing a solution and grassroots problem both in the UK and overseas now as well. What would be your advice on that side? What, what, I, what I would say is actually to find credible messengers, people that deliver the service very well, um, find out best practice, that's a key thing. Um, look at how you can integrate what they do into what you do. Um, look at ways in which you can work in partnership. Um, you know, uh, if you're a social enterprise, let's say, in the UK, and you're trying to get money, you're trying to draw down money, it's better if you can all put your accounts together. Work in partnership, now you can draw a bigger fund. Yeah. And so then everybody gets to eat from <laughs> this, this, this pot of money as opposed to uh, you know one person actually trying to struggle to get it yeah. um, you know finding individuals that are better at doing it than you um, entrepreneurs um, getting mentors getting learning mentors I learn from a number of people um, you know I've had the opportunity to meet some some really um, inspiring and successful global entrepreneurs and really just listening to those people um, I would recommend that you walk with a notepad to anything and everywhere you go and yeah. um, just pick up pick up information um, and don't make notes on your phone because your phone can be hacked. You can lose your phone. Uh, you tend not to read it. You know, it gives you, you know, it causes insomnia if you're looking at the blue light at night time. <laughs> you can't hack paper. Yeah. <laughs> so um, write, on, write it on a notepad. Um, you know, network like mad. Um, it's not necessarily um, who you know, but it's who knows you. Yeah. Because if somebody knows you and what you do, then you're able then to pick up um, something that you may not have had because they're talking about something. Yeah. Someone, they're in a conversation, they say, oh, I remember this guy, Alex, that um, 
did this thing. <laughs> and then immediately, you know, you've actually got a connect um, yeah. because that person knows you. So um, it's really train, chaining, chain, tra training yourself and changing your mindset um, around, uh, around hugging your baby too tight. You know, like you said, um, you've got to put it out there. Um, yeah. Tell people your story. You know, people buy stories. They don't necessarily buy business. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they buy your story. They buy into individuals. And um, when, they, when they buy into the individual, um, then they have the ability to to help you if they don't like you they are probably not going to be helped it's all about relationships <laughs> so be real yeah. that's it just be real just open be real and honest open and Sometimes honest easier said than done but it's the toughest thing is being open and honest to people and it is it pays dividends it, it does. Really does it absolutely does in fact there was a time when um, i was at an mit event and it was a, a harvard uh, professor that taught me this uh, around networking and um there was a there was a, ser a serious entrepreneur in him i mean a really wealthy guy from the us and uh, all these entrepreneurs surrounding him just waiting to talk to him like you know almost beckoning him with their business cards and um he said can you see that guy over there i said yeah he said um he said i want you to give me your pitch so i started to tell him about gen x and all. he said no 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 no, i don't want to hear that every business here is amazing so yours is amazing and everybody else's business is amazing i want you to tell me about you what's your story so i started to tell him about my story and all the rest of my, my testimony so just be you know of, of you know having to come through a community and, yeah. and all the rest of it and failures and successes and he said truncate it, shorten it down, start with that and then tell him about your business. Go over there and tap him on his, on his, on his elbow. And I said, but he's talking to people, he says, I don't care, just go and tap him on the elbow. So I tapped him on the elbow <laughs> and he turned to me and he said, he said, uh, hi, and I said, um, I said, uh, my name's Nathaniel Pete. Um, I grew up in Tottenham, North London. I didn't pass my GCSEs. I had to hustle my way into college. <laughs> I managed to get in because someone believed in me and I got onto a degree in engineering and then boom, 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 and I went off. He turned his whole body towards me and then said to me, he's really interested in the renewable energy space. And he gave me his card. <laughs> now, the thing is, it just shows, be real, yeah. be honest, be transparent, and uh, you might get that breakthrough. And don't be afraid about who you don't are. Don't be afraid, that's it. Yeah, own it, I think. Absolutely, it's own it, completely own it, and just, just be you at the end of the day, you know, that's it. Fantastic. Now, Nathaniel, thank you so much. Now, we're just going to finish with something which I know you feel quite passionate about, but why the eagle on your lapel? Why the eagle on my lapel? I've got a golden eagle on my lapel because uh, it's about rising higher. Um, you know, the eagle is unlike any other bird. The eagle, when it experiences a rain cloud, which is a towering cumulus limbus, they're very dangerous clouds. You don't want to you don't fly through them. You're going to be you know, up and down. You don't want to be underneath them. They're going to shoot out microbursts and it's horrible. The eagle, unlike any other bird, when it encounters these rain, cl rain clouds, it shifts its wings, adjusts its body position and rises above the cloud. And so the thing is, above the cloud is always bright. The sun's always shining. And so it, it's a constant reminder for me to always shift, adjust and rise above it. And so we have golden eagles. And uh, when you are with the eagle, other eagles want to associate with you. There is a statement which I've heard many times, a quotation, if you associate with the chickens, you never fly with the eagles. And so that's part of the reason why I wear my golden eagle, which is flying, because I want to be above the clouds. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much for watching. Remember, any thoughts, insights, comments, do put them in the relevant section. A massive thanks to Samira from The Creative Roots, who's filming this and pulling this together. If you've got anything in that space that you need filming, recorded, anything like that, do give her a shout. The links and stuff will be along with this video, as will the links to Gen X, Safety Box, and Nathaniel on LinkedIn. Thank you for watching. And Nathaniel, thank you so much, Always buddy. Alex, man. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> it's good to see you.